You know what you are, Gary? That Ocean's 13 dialogue comes to mind where it says, you're analog thieves in a digital world. <laughs> That's what, you're an analog Brilliant. coach in a digital I world. That, I love that series. Eh? <laughs> I love that series. A champion batsman, a legendary coach. India has a special love for Gary Kirsten, the chief architect behind our 2011 World Cup win. Today we talk about how we don't like to cut fruit, about trekking in the Himalayas, and about good parenting. So I've been watching cricket since I was five years old, like non-stop. Yeah. So for me, it's live television and cricket coming yeah. together. I'm like a kid in a candy store. <laughs> <laughs> Working in the cricket environment is a real privilege. Yeah, it is. A lot of people don't have that, you know. It's a real privilege. I have little kids, I have six, seven year olds who will come to me for a picture and their mothers will say, Oh, he wants to grow up and take your job. I'm like, sure man, jump right in, come on. It feels good. I don't think too many bankers or CEOs have kids coming up to them saying, I want to grow up and take your job. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a banker. <laughs> it's funny because my family is all full of bankers, so I wanted to be a banker. But as I said, you know, look at me. I wanted to be a banker, but I grew up to be a wanker. <laughs> and then one kid turned around and said, you mean anchor? I was like, yeah, that's what I meant. That's exactly what I said. I said anchor. Thank you. <laughs> you like being back in India, don't you? I love India. Yeah? I, I mean, as a foreigner, if you come to India in the name of cricket, yeah. Uh, I don't think it gets any better. I mean, it's... I don't think Greg Chappell agrees. <laughs> There's a few who don't agree. But the ones who do good are appreciating. See, you yeah. did good. That's why people love you here. Yeah, but I mean, it's... You know, I've had two challenging years with Delhi, you know. So it's yeah. a, you know, kind of... Uh, that doesn't take away the experience of coming over here, working with... Uh, in the cricket environment, in the cricket space, where there's such a love for the game, you know. Yeah. You can't underestimate it. I think some, we all talk about it, but it actually to feel it every day, you stay in these mag magnificent hotels. I also enjoy waking up every morning and, and going down to the breakfast buffet and having cut fruit. Yeah. Because I'm not cutting my own fruit at home. That's true. That's <laughs> what I did right now. Cut my fruit. <laughs> cut my fruit for me. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, you got one cross off for me as well. Yeah. That's very sweet of you. Thank I you. She might have that, you know, even though I've had one already. That's fine. You might have another one. It's an off day. I've done my 10k run this morning. But you can do another two in the evening to burn off the no, cross. Ten's off. enough. <laughs> yeah, 10's enough. Of course it is. Maybe I'll do 15 tomorrow. Let's see. If you're running five kilometers extra for this cross on, then just leave it. I'll eat it. I don't want you to go through. <laughs> that keeps me sane. Eh? And you get up this morning and when I go for a run and I wake up, finish the run, I'm in a good mood. It still happens, right? No matter how many years you've been around the game, you still lose a close one and it still rankles for a while, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, you, you can get emotional around it, you know. You get over it man, quickly. I get over it pretty quickly. Yeah. But I think that's uh, that's the secret that you should let it affect you, and then get over it quickly. You can't have that attitude that it doesn't affect you because it does. Yeah. You know your job's on the line, so yeah. you've you've got to perform. Yeah. So there's always that that pressure. So it's not as if you're not going to go into a match. Well, I don't care. Sometimes I feel there's too much pressure. So you oh you've got to be successful today. You've got to do it now and every time. And with some of the players who are my friends and who've got sort of big paychecks. They read the paper and they take the money a person's made and the number of runs he scored no, no, no. and they divide it. That's pathetic. They say it's uh, 10 lakhs per run. No, no it's not. No. I feel for the player. Yeah. I think it's really tough on the player. And then, and then, then you've got to kind of question what the motives are for the, for the franchise owners. It's, it's never because just the, the sport, right? I mean, at the end of the day, there's also advertising and you need yeah. names and faces and they, that sell. And it becomes a, a value proposition. So it's, you know, is the player creating value on and off the field? You could take a guy who um, a franchise, you know, spend a lot of money on, a, a real big ticket player, and he could have had one performance for the franchise which got them off into the, got them into the playoffs. Would he have been worth the spend? 
But I think the best players are the guys that can have a good st strike rate and a good average. So if you've got a guy who averages in the high 30s and his strike rate is 130 plus, that's a, that's a quality player. Yeah. You take a punt on a young player and uh, you kind of back him to do something and it's great. I, I love that. I love seeing that uh, hugely. I think everyone does, doesn't it's it? So, it's so great to see a young player really firing in this environment. Yeah. But they, they're going to make errors along the way. And some of them are going to have good seasons, some of them are going to have bad seasons. My default is always to back the, the player reg regardless. What do you think about uh, kids in India being fast-tracked to the national team? My one view would be there's nothing better than picking a guy that's had a lot of first-class experience. Um, that when he gets thrown into the cut and thrust of international cricket, he's kind of mentally ready for it. I do think there are the individuals that would, would just fast, be fast-tracked. I mean, I just think of, I can give you names, I think of Jock Callis. Yeah. Jock Callis, he didn't need to go through six years of first-class career. You know? yeah. Sachin Tendulkar, another one. Virat Kohli, didn't he? He went in True. kind of straight away. And I think the beauty of this IPL is you're seeing a lot of these young True. I mean, that could potentially could play for India quite quickly. The only problem with that is that you've got to bide your time with those guys. And, and I think that's, a, that's, that's always the challenging one, even when I was coaching when Virat started. You know? yeah. And you know, we, he, Sachin Tendulkar pulled out of a tournament in Sri Lanka. Yeah. And then we picked Virat and he opened the batting because that's yeah. where Sachin would have Yeah. And you, it took him a while to find his feet. It wasn't just straight away. And then we put him in at three. And then he got a, a hundred, I remember, at Calcutta. It was, I think it was his first hundred. And, you know, kind of from then on, it was, he just blitzed it. And then at Test Cricket, it took him a little bit longer yeah. as well, you know. So my, my thrill is that I gave him another, just one more game. Yeah. And then he came good. So you've got to bide your time with those guys. And that's the point we were making earlier, is that I've always kind of backed the player to yeah. eventually come good, but IPL doesn't allow that. The balance. The, yeah, you can walk right into a frame, that's fine. You can walk, no, 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 come in, come in. <laughs> he, he's, he's a tall man, huh? I want to see if you're taller than me. Can you just, do you think he's taller than me? Easily. I'm about the same, huh? He's <laughs> only No, I'm not. Is he? Yeah. Lord, he is. What are wow. you, 6'2"? I'm 6, yes, between 6'2 six and 6'3". Six you're 6'5"? I don't know why I bother getting up then. <laughs> so you have, so you have two players, two young players. You throw them in, you know, deep water. One of them swims beautifully. Another one maybe not. Your job now for the next week is tougher with which guy? Good question. So. The, the danger, the danger, I believe, as a as a as a coach, that you always you you, you run the gauntlet the whole time because there's this the, your your job's on the line in terms of performance. Yeah. Okay. So you've you've got this sitting there, and then you've got your resources here. Yeah. Now you've recruited your resources because you feel that they can get you to there. Yeah. Okay, but now this is not kind of happening. So now you're looking at saying, am I maximizing out of my resources? Yeah. But I'm looking at these resources, I'm saying, geez, there's some really young, talented kids and I, and, and yeah. I like the way they play cricket yeah. and I back them. <laughs> it's tricky, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I've built relationships with these guys. I've spent time in the nets with them. I've worked with them um, emotionally. I've worked with them kind of in, you know, in, a, in, a, in a lot of different ways with these individuals. And I'm wanting to, you know, I'm wanting to get the best out of this guy, yeah. and I, you know, because he could have a future in the game. So I find it very difficult to just cut players underneath Loose. the knees. I, you know, I need the, I need the performance. Yeah. It's not only about me. Yeah. Wow. So, so that's, that's a very difficult one to manage. And, and that's your only resource, by the way. So that's your asset. The asset are your people. So now what you're trying to do is, is work with your people in such a way that they can go make the performances that we all need. But now you're in this highly competitive space where every game's on the line. There's pressure to perform in every game. This is not a long process. This is a quick six-week process. Yeah. And 
I found it really difficult to try and kind of find those shifts. That's the challenge of IPL. You know, you have a squad of 23, 24 guys, yeah. 11 walk on the park. And the, the toughest part about the job is managing the players that don't play. You've got nine internationals or eight internationals. You can only play four. And you can only play four and they sit around kind of waiting and they're vegging and, you know, you can only have so many practices and yeah. you get tired. And, you know, you try and encourage, especially the internationals, go see, go see India, man. Yeah. Go do something. Go up to the Malays. Go do a three-day trekking thing. And we yeah. would let them go. Yeah. They, most of them are too scared to do it. They, it's like, I can't do that on my own. That's true. You also get that was the best thing I did in India, by the way, when I was with the Indian team. Which is what? I went skiing in the Himalayas. Snow skiing. Wow. A place called Gulmarg. Yeah. Now, Gulmarg. I've been. So they had one kind of strip that they prepared. You can do a lot of backcountry skiing there, but it's quite dangerous there. Mm. And I'm not an advanced skier by any stretch. You're not like an alpine assassin. But it was a, yeah, it was a great experience. I always try and encourage guys to get out to your hotel room. Right? Yeah. Go do stuff. And sitting in a hotel room playing video games. Come on. Should There's more to life than that. Whip them, right? <laughs> if we run to, to the uh, mountains. Yeah, exactly. Run to the mountains or run, go surfing. Or go yeah. see this place. Go. What a magnificent place to go and That's hang true. out and spend three, four days on the beach there and swim and surf and have a I've good time. been to every state in India except one. Which is the one you haven't been to? Mizoram. Where's, I don't even know. Northeast. Where. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's above Bengal, isn't it? Uh, kind of east of Bengal. East of Bengal, okay. Yeah, so it's sort of got China, Burma and okay. Thailand. It narrows up yeah, over Bangladesh of, and yes. then opens out again. Okay. Into what's called the Seven Sisters. Do you, have, do you, have you heard of a, an area up that part of the world called, is it Nagaland? Nagaland, I've been to Nagaland, Nagaland, yes. yeah, yeah. It's a big uh, Christian environment, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. A lot yes. of churches and... Big on football. Yeah. Uh, bigger music. Is that quite a, a vast area? Is it, uh... it is. It's a big state. Okay. Yeah, it's a big state. But it's beautiful. And I went 10 years ago where you needed an inner line permit to travel there. Sounds pretty fancy, right? I'm going to a place which needs an inner line permit. I don't even know what that means. Inner neither, line. Neither do I, yeah. Have you been up much into the Himalayas? No, I mean, have you been trekking much. and... No, no, no. I haven't. I haven't been trekking. Oh, I'd love to do that. Yeah. That's one thing I, d I desperately want to do. Is to go and have kind of a week trekking trip up in the, into the mountains there. I could sell the concept to National Geographic. We could go with cameras. Telling you, inspire the world. <laughs> Is that the only way I'm going to get there? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be great, right? <laughs> also stay in good hotels on the way. I've, I'm, a, I'm a, you know, as a South African, we, we kind of adventurous. I mean, I, I love mountain biking and running. Yeah and uh, you know snow skiing and I, I kind of love doing all those sort of things that's that's my game I love that we Indians like downloading apps but you're good at it we're very good at downloading apps <laughs> <laughs> creating them downloading them criticizing them uh, <laughs> we're great at that Your time when you were, when you guys were in the team bus, you come from a time when there were conversations. <laughs> it faced me. <laughs> now what they do is they're communicating to the guy two back, but on WhatsApp. And sending him pictures. <laughs> Just so you don't need to turn around and look. Let me the send world, you a selfie. The world's changed. Yeah. <laughs> the world has changed. But I mean, it is what it is. I think it's, I mean, cell phones are incredible devices, aren't they? Yeah. And you can communicate fairly efficiently on a cell phone. Only problem is it becomes impersonal. True. You have a one-on-one. -on -one, True. You know, sometimes you need to have a... One-on-one. -on -one. A face-to-face. -face. Yeah. You know what you are, Gary? That Ocean's 13 dialogue comes to mind where it says, you're analog thieves in a digital world. <laughs> That's what you're, you're an analog Brilliant. coach in a digital I love world. That, I love that series, <laughs> eh? I love that series. Yeah, we're I still watch school. those DVDs. We're old school people. We say, give it time. The new world is... No time. I just, I Turn just, it wrong. Uh, I, we just live in a world of kind of everything is so performance based. And you know what we're doing? You know what's scaring me? We're thrusting that on our seven and eight year olds. Yeah, we are, aren't we? And I'm seeing that with my, with my kids as well, is the pressure to perform. I'm reading a book at the moment called Taming the Tiger Parent, mm. which is talking about the parent that just puts this undue massive pressure win, on their kid. Win, win. win at all costs and train you up at all costs. And there's no time to play. 
as a six-year-old, we've got to get you reading properly and we've got to get you doing maths and and get you ready and, and you've got to be hitting a thousand balls a day, you know? Yeah. It's like it's like we gotta get you ready. Yeah. Our job as a parent is to get you ready for the rigors of life aid. Isn't that kind of forget about playing and just having fun? Too. I just find that sad. Yeah. Did a kid just have a so what if he's not the best? Most of them aren't think I'm gonna be the best. There's only one in every thousand that are the best. What about the other 999? But, what we, but you know what we do is we celebrate the one. We celebrate sporting heroes. We celebrate high levels of achievement and success. We don't celebrate average. But life has become like that, isn't it? It's ruthless. But I just think, I just think it's almost, it's, I don't know, it feels like a horrible way to live. I just want to talk to people. Yeah. I just want to, I want to speak to people, I want to, I want to learn from but their ideas. But I don't have too ideas. much time to speak to you because I've, I've got 17 WhatsApps to reply to. So I don't have a lot of time, sorry. So, and you've got Twitter to check and your emails <laughs> and Instagram and... It's just, the way, man. And hey. nobody's saying, I don't have more time to chat to you because, you know, I've got to talk to my wife. <laughs> no, nobody's saying that. I'd love to stay and chat, but I've got to go play with my kid. That's good. Yeah, that's the other way around. Sorry, I can't play with you because I've got to answer the phone. Because <laughs> there's 17 WhatsApps. And what I've decided to do is I'm starting to take videos of parents behaving on the side of fields. Oh, that's awesome. Watching their eight-year-olds. <laughs> watching an eight-year-old play. And how upset they get if the team loses or his kid makes a mistake. It's embarrassing. Just keep, a, keep your video going and take a video, take a video of when someone gets the wrong food order yeah. and watch how that person behaves or um, he's been told that his flight's been delayed or cancelled mm. and watch how people behave or go stand in a checkout counter and see how people want to jump the queue and people are chasing man, there's, there's no chill, <laughs> there's no chill. <laughs> Shooting the Just parents. Shoot parents, watch how parents behave. Oh, that's good. Okay, I'm gonna, I think you have a flight to catch. Yep. We'll let you on. This has been good. Are we finished? Yes. Oh. Is that the show? Well that's done. That's, that's, I'm doing that a different kind of. That wasn't that staged. It wasn't at all, was it? Well done. <laughs>